Well, plenty of good news, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel, Football Therapy, with me, your uh, <coughs> your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, friend. I really do hope that Chelsea can score goals and Levi Colwell is staying. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap to duck. Yes. Welcome back to the channel. Chelsea have scored nine goals in two pre-season games. Of course, they beat Brighton 4-1 last night. I guess it was last night, depending. I mean, yeah, it was last night. I'm just all screwed up through the time zones. I did watch the entire game back uh, on the Chelsea website. Thank you, Chelsea. And uh, yes, it wasn't perfect. Brighton are a good team. <clears throat> They are very well coached. They are well settled. Um, they scored, of course, three goals in this game. They had a man sent off. Van Heck got dismissed for a really gnarly tackle on young Cesare Cassidy. You rarely see red cards in um, friendlies, if ever. And there were yellow cards. And this is because it's a grudge match between Chelsea and Brighton. And um, yes, our paths have been interlocked so much these last 12 months. But we'll talk about why Chelsea are good now and why we should be happy about the Colwill news coming from the Chelsea manager. If, um, if you're feeling good about Chelsea scoring goals now, please do drop a like on the video. Or just if you want to support the content, do drop a like on the video. And you are, of course, welcome to subscribe. Uh, and you should hit the bell. You know, you really should. Okay, so before we talk about football and goals, which is all just simply lovely. <clears throat> after the game, Maurizio Pochettino has said, Colwell is not for sale. I know the lad gave away a penalty in that game, and he looks like he takes a risk in the box sometimes, but ultimately, what an incredible a defender he is. He's, he's really assured. His, um, he occupies space really well, his spatial awareness. He's, um, you know, he's very, very, very good. He's got that sweet left boot. He can do the outside of the boot, long passes. Incredibly good. He would also, you can imagine, develop a lot being so, so young. Under the tutorage, uh, tutelage, tutelage, that's the word. It may, it may not be. I really hope so. Of Maurizio Pochettino and indeed the likes of Thiago Silva. Um, Maurizio Pochettino has said he is not for sale and he believes he can become one of England's best centre backs. Tall praise. We've already produced one of those in John Terry. Can we produce another in Levi Colwell? We do have um, other centre-backs, you know, the likes of Trevor Chalabert did, did pretty good. Um, and, uh, you know, Wesley Fofana is injured. We may still look to purchase someone, but if Pochettino thinks that between Levi, Thiago Silva, Badia Schiel and Trevor Chalabert, who's done himself no wrong so far in pre-season, four goes into doing, four goes into two, and it looks like we are absolutely going to be locked down with this 4-2-3-1 formation uh, playing under Maurizio Pochettino because that's his that's his style and Chelsea look like they're much better offensively when playing this formation with these tactics. And of course, these games, these sample games, will offer a lot of insight in what we need to do in the transfer window. Of course, yesterday we reacted to the news from David Ornstein that Chelsea are uh, pretty much having terms agreed with Kudus from um, Ajax. Very, very exciting winger, attacking midfielder. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to read my reaction to that, excuse me, watch my reaction to that, me reading the article and talking about the analysis, the short analysis of the player, but we all know Kudus, he's very high profile. The 22-year-old, and you can make a case for um, right wing being a little bit of problem position. I do go watch that video. And actually, I, you know, Mudrick scored a goal. We'll talk about that in a, mo in a moment. Looked good. Of course, Sterling does look like a senior player that will be leaned on, but he hasn't impressed massively so far in uh, preseason. Angelo has shown flashes, but ultimately wide forward. And of course, um, that right flank, a left footer, Kudus would be perfect for that. Does look like a problem of need, especially Sterling played on the right flank for a lot of the time in the game against Brighton. And um, he's not impressed me. Like, I know he's got it in him to be a good player, but he needs to do a lot of repeated actions. He said it himself in the pre-match press conference. And of course, when you get coached by Guardiola, that's like your bread and butter, isn't it? Um, so yeah, a wide forward is, is maybe necessary. And uh, I do urge you to go watch my previous upload to, um, to think about that. But let's talk about the football. 
So Brighton are a very good, um, very good team. They played a good game despite going down to uh, you know ten men as well, and um, obviously they got a penalty granted to them. But Chelsea were at one point four one up in this game despite going one nil down. So that's a big turnaround. It also shows a little bit of resilience from the Chelsea team. Of course, we played a 4-2-3-1. Um, for the first half of the game, we continued to see Christopher Nkunku play as a striker. And of course, um, Nico Jackson in the second half, or came on in the second half. <clears throat> Which is interesting because Pochettino has gone on to say he does know he does know and understand and Kunku can play multiple positions. But I think, personally, he's just trying him out as a striker, thinking that we've got number 10s, you know, we've got a few players that can play there, whether it's Gallagher, that we saw Gallagher in the double pivot, or Chuck Wameka, of course, who played there. He would probably consider, behind the scenes, should Chelsea go for a Ray and Cherky or a Kudus, they could, of course, both play in the number 10 as well, as well as the right-hand side. And he's just trying players in different positions, of course, Ian Matson's apparently played winger in his youth, but he's obviously a left back in senior football, but he's exclusively played left wing for Chelsea. So we talk about, you know, a need for wingers. Maybe uh, Ian Matson, you know, offers a really good option on that on that left hand flank. It's also worth mentioning as well that, um, of course, Chile, Chilwell played behind him, plays very, very well. He's a very offensive fullback, Chilwell. And, um, and obviously him and Matson playing together, they're both offensive fullback left-sided players this could be one of those unique situations and opportunities where they just swap all the time and then obviously if you have two players down a flank that can legitimately swap and of course they're both left backs so they will both feel native in the left back position and Chelsea won't feel vulnerable in tran on transition because they'll be like well we've got a left back covering but at the same time you know Chilwell loves getting in the box scoring goals uh, and Matson seemingly does as well he might have had a more quiet game against Brighton but he still popped a couple of shots off I believe <clears throat> And suddenly you're utilizing this uh, surplus of left backs you've got and occupying more positions and, you know, feeling like you've created a, perhaps a unique tactic or, you know, perhaps a more rare tactic of them literally switching all the time. And the opposition team don't know how to plan for you positionally, which is really, really interesting. Of course, you've got Kukurea. Uh, Kukurea came on and he did a little bit of the Pep Guardiola inverted fullback just sitting in midfield. I know Pep's since gone from uh, putting was it, Cancelo from fullback to midfield to doing it with a centre-back with John Stones um, and making a back three, which is interesting. But um, yeah, so maybe it, it's nice to see Pochettino try these more like innovative things, you know, putting Kukure in midfield um, and having that, like, just options. He's just seeing it, basically. Can, can you know, Nkunku be the striker with Jackson? You know, can he be, like, a, a reliable goal scorer in the centre-forward position? Because we know he scores goals. Do we need to try and buy a mm, throw the bag at Martinez or pick your you know your own striker? Do we need to do that? Can we trust um, Nkunku and Jackson? Of course. Um, so yeah, trying different things. Whether it's the river, you know, the swapping fullbacks, left backs on the left hand side, Kukurea in midfield, Matson uh, just as a winger, you know, playing Nkunku as a striker. But one thing is for certain, Chelsea are much much fitter already. We're still only done two games in preseason, and it's already so so obvious that this team is much much more. Um, you know, drilled and fit. And of course, they've got so much to go still against the Brighton team that are really fit and also are well coached and settled. Uh, these two games, I know it's Wrexham as well, but Chelsea have demonstrated the high octane nature of their play and they're starting to build chemistry on the pitch. Having a solid locked down formation of 4 2 3 1 shows development. Of course, we saw Thiago in the centre back positions. We saw Levi, we saw Chalabar, we saw Thiago Silva. Um, do we saw Bashir Humphreys as well a little bit? Of course, in the fullback positions, we saw uh, Ben Shewell, Kukure, also inverted a little bit. And at the right back, Malo Gusto. Um, Rhys James, of course, has joined the squad now and watched on from the sidelines. But Malo Gusto playing uh, at right back looks very impressive at times. Defensively, defending his right flank. Perhaps not when he has to move over to the other flank on a set piece to defend. Uh, and then we can see the opener. He looked pretty poor there. And he wasn't always perfect, but he looks like a proper right back in a time where we need a proper right back cover. We've got a host of good centre backs, you know. Again, the the big news with the centre backs from this game uh, and this occasion is essentially Pochettino is just waving away the Levi Colwell stuff, saying, "Yeah, he's staying." You know, nonsense to all that. Um, midfield pivot, we saw uh, um, Andre Santos start. Looks very good indeed. 
For him, it would have been excellent starting in front of Thiago Silva, a guy nearly double his age, but, you know, a uh, Brazilian countryman can talk him through it. Um, he played, it was interesting, you know, inexperienced, well, inexperienced double pivots in inexperienced in age, and perhaps Gallagher not very rarely playing in a double, double pivot. We are still short there. Of course, neither of those guys you'd imagine would be first choice going into next season. It would be Enzo Fernandez, who indeed came on later in the game. And, uh, you know, touch wood, should things go well, Moises Caicedo, which um, that's the last time I'm going to say his name in this video. Uh, and then we've spoken about the aforementioned number 10 position. You know, we saw Carney Chukwameka. That's pretty good. He's strong and direct, but does he have the quality? And is he going to lock down that particular role? You know, now we know what formation we play at Chelsea with Pochettino, like flat out, always this 4-2-3-1. Granted, it might move slightly with certain players interchanging and, you know, like the likes of Kukure moving into midfield. But that's your starting position uh, formation. That's your bread and butter. Um... So, you know, now we know, he's like, right, you're going to play this role. Is Conor Gallagher just going to train as a advanced eight in a double pivot slightly, you know, next to the sitter, essentially playing instead of Enzo Fernandez, Possibly. We know he could also be a good, you know, defensive option as a number 10. Like, he works... I mean, that's a little bit cruel because he scores a lot of goals and he is direct, but he works very hard and he's good defensively, Conor Gallagher. So, like I said, wingers are an issue, you know. I mean, Matson is an interesting experiment. He had a really good start against Wrexham. He had a, you know, it was okay at this game, but he will need more assessment. Um, I think there's a good chance of staying in the squad regardless as a player that can just play anywhere down that left flank. Uh, like I said at the top of the video, Sterling has disappointed me so far. I know he's going to get into more fitness and Pochettino seems to like him. I think he sees him as a bit more of a leader up, up the top. So I appreciate that, but he's going to have to do more to, to basically stay in the starting lineup as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Raheem Sterling. In the second half, we saw uh, Michal Mudrik, who, of course, scored a wonderful goal, demonstrated immense speed in retrieving some, you know, lost causes, passes to the byline. He, he gets there, you know, in the same way N'Golo Kante used to. But... um. Yeah, incredibly fast, and what what a well taken goal! You of course are linking up with Nico Jackson, one two give and go, lashed it uh, away from the goalkeeper, so he couldn't save it. If you get Mudrik in form and in confidence, and his sustainable confidence, then yes, you know from what I'm seeing, then my my previous theory of him just being a, a closer, which he was in, in in this game as well. You know, you need to see him start a game, whole retain the tactical instruction throughout the ninety minutes because you're going to be under pressure for large stages of the game. Um, when you get a player that you don't know can do that yet, they look much better when you bring him on, you know, like a, a Pulisic at times and stuff like that, you know. So he still has to prove that he can stay calm and stay focused for the 90 minutes and do the defensive plan and not just come on as like a, you know, a wicked, exciting attacker at the end. Uh, but if he can do that, then you give him confidence and he can, you know, gets into the habit of scoring goals in the first half of football matches then Hot Dog, he's a starter for me, man. You know, incredible scenes. We know he's, he's got massive potential, raw potential. His physical athleticism is second to none, uh, as it is. So, um, you know, if he... And obviously, he's got all the time in the world, and he's on a long-term deal, so he's got plenty of time to, like, settle into it. But it's an incredible goal. Uh, and Kunku as well, lovely little finish to the equaliser. Um, he hasn't... And Kunku, has, in the two games, he hasn't been... Like massively involved, but both goals were good for different reasons. Of course, the first goal rounded the keeper and slotted it home, which we've seen Havertz mess up a few times. Um, and then, of course, the little side foot finish in the box when the ball's coming in, opportunism. It wasn't pretty, but you need to be able to do that. A lot of players don't know where their feet are, and that doesn't go in. He's taken, he's had two chances there, and he's just taken them like bang, bang. And, um, ultimately that's what you, you're you going to want from him I think although if he does play in a number 10 a second striker he's either going to have to be a bit he's going to have to like be integrated more creatively making passes or working harder defensively although he's demonstrated he can do that I wonder if Pochettino just thinks look play in the striker and score goals and see if you can do that for the moment you know start there but um you know, if he keeps scoring a goal a game, doesn't matter what any other analysis really, does it? <laughs> yes, that's the beautiful thing about football. You can be like, oh, he's lacking and he hasn't done that. If you're playing in the centre forward position and you're scoring a goal every game, you're absolved of criticism. Even if you don't join like the defence and you mess up tactically and you don't do what the gaffer says. If you keep doing that, 
especially in a four two three one because there's so much going on behind you you know they can um pick up the slack uh, and the wingers in pochettino's system play so narrow that yeah it's um it's it's like you can get away with a little bit more but ultimately, we've got to talk about Nico Jackson, you know, just as Mudrick took his wonderful goal. <sighs> Nico Jackson, he's played, what, I don't know, across two games, maybe 70 minutes? And he's got three assists and a goal. So off the bat, he's come in and he's not just eyes lit up like, I want to score, I want to strike it, I want to score, I want to score. He's like, no, no, let's play. I'm going to link up with my teammates and serve some goals. The link up with Mudrick was sublime. Um, this guy, you know, he, he's just serving up assists all over the gaff. And then when he gets a chance, a conventional centre forward striker chance, the ball's played for him. He's on the shoulder. He runs, uh, times the run perfectly, one on one with the keeper, and just lashes it in really high but composed. And you're like, right. I've seen enough, baby. That right there is a good striker, a good centre forward. And not just because he's looks strong and, and athletic and he's took his, you know, goal, conventional centre forward style goal very well, which is a big tick. Okay, striker, done your striker thing. He's got three assists as well. So, he, you know, he's probably, I don't know his minutes exactly. I'm sort of pulling it out of the air when I say 70 minutes. If he's got a goal in 70 minutes, amazing. If you add three assists to that, incredible. Yes, temper expectations. It's Wrexham as well as a very good Brighton. Uh, and the Brighton team did go down to uh, 10 men. So, yes, but but what you see, you have to analyse what you see and what they're doing on the pitch and how they're combining and how they look in terms of fitness and confidence. That's the most important thing of preseason: Fitness, building confidence, building relationships. And so far, Pochettino's Chelsea are ticking all those boxes. So, yes, incredibly exciting stuff. Good news about Colwell. Good news about attack scoring goals. I'll be very interested to learn what you guys think. So, please do leave your comments down in the comment section below. And I thank you for dropping a like on this video and for your subscription to Football Therapy. Um, of course, I will upload again today. I upload multiple times a day. And if you want to keep, um, keep informed, then keep it locked, friends. All right, then. Peace.